the loudest we can. Let's give the Lord some praise. Glory to God. Please, let's take our seats in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me greet your neighbor. Good evening. And now, now I know you might have greeted that person before. Greet the person one more time. Say, good evening. How are you? Amen. Glory to God. Please don't forget that no matter what goes on in your life, never lose your joy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey! Never lose never. your joy. It's double tragedy to not be winning in life and be losing your joy. Oh, yeah. You might not be able to control everything in life, but you can control how you respond. Yes, it is double tragedy for you not to have the bloke you want mm. and not to keep a joy that you have. I know you are looking straight like it's not you I'm talking to. <laughs> it's very painful when you are not winning on any side. At least win on somewhere. Win on the control of your own sphere of influence. Hmm? It's good to be back home. Praise God. <laughs> I'm just thinking for a minute that in that 48 hours I'll be going again. <laughs> it's funny. But that's, you know, so funny enough, I had a, an event to do that I was not supposed to come tonight to. All I needed to do was to say, um, I'm coming for that event. And because of me, they've canceled the events. Uh, I said, I'm not coming. Mama, you were there now. <laughs> I said, I'm not, they say you are not coming. We have postponed it till any time you come back. Wow. Yes. 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 I, I said, how will I tell the people that we are supposed to? Because they are very powerful men in this Lagos. Very powerful people. I'm supposed to. Uh, when, when I said, how do I convince them not to come? They said, don't worry, we'll write for you the letter that we used to tell them that the meeting can hold again. You just post it. I don't know if you understand what it is. <laughs> true, true, they wrote the letter. As I posted it, they say yes, we support you. <laughs> See, this life be relevant. They are not Christian. They are going to be smoking beer and drinking beer. But you know, technically, what I wanted to prove was to let them know, to confirm to myself, I can kill something else for the kingdom. Yes. If I, it was difficult to say, no, they are, these are big men. There are people you probably may have queued in the office to see. And I mean that with and without respect, okay? I hope you know what I mean. Yeah, because sometimes some of you just think that because you see me like this, you think I'm like this. You need to see me in another light. You will fear God. You hear that? It's the truth now. It's the truth. And that's the power. So if you don't know how to discern relationships, you just think that, I will see Bishop tonight. I need to teach some of you cruelty. You know, but it's not a good thing for a father to teach cruelty. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm sincerely excited to be back. Maybe because it's a shift service. You know, shift is different somehow. When it's shift, there's opportunity to, to, to talk from the heart and um, to do some. So, so I, of course, I have a lot to share with us. And um, I'm trusting God that tonight will be very impactful. How are you, ma? Money is coming for you. Amen. Amen. So Amen. I want us to just share some fellowship powerfully. And then we go ahead. How are you doing? Thank you. Good to see you again. God bless you. <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I'm sure you're waiting for your own dollars. It's God. <laughs> <laughs> We don't force these things. Amen. Yeah. If it does not come, it does not come. If it comes, it comes. Amen. Amen. I will never forge God. Amen. Just take that with you as you grow up. This man, will, I will never forge God. If it does not say anything, it does not say. You know, I was at. I met three different people when I traveled, and only God is my witness. And some of them, they are the witness. As I as I came closer, I was knowing more about them. Hmm. 
<laughs> as, as I was getting closer, I, it was like radar. You know how they are looking for metal? They are now, then if you go further, you are now, I could tell one. I got into the toilet. I said, you, you are from Ohio State. It's like Canada. So I've never seen him before. The guy looked at me like one idol till we left that conference. And he was the guest speaker. Hmm. <laughs> ah, he said, how did you know? You know, that's the question. It's word of knowledge. As I was getting close, I was knowing more about it. I said, I can tell you more. As I was getting close, I was knowing more. I'm, I think it's a new, it's a new dimension I'm entering hey. into. And I mean it. A man of God I was ministering to, I mean, ministering with on Sunday, you know, he had a guest. And as he sat there, I was hearing his language. <laughs> and I told him, I said, you speak Twi. He said, yes, how do you know? I said, I don't know how I know. But I know these things sometimes. I think my, my gifting in that area is growing. Hallelujah. With Hallelujah. accuracy. That's even the good thing. It's not, I'm not guessing. With accurate, there was a lady I met as I was talking to her. As I was talking with her on the phone, I, I was going to tell her, You go to a Catholic church, this is your, you're the only child of your mother. You are the, you know, <laughs> how do you know? That's the question. How do you know? You told her, I just said, Have I ever met you before? <laughs> <laughs> how do I know? La cuckoo, la la la. Hallelujah. All right, so, so, yes, I was. And incidentally, um, somebody was releasing powers, you know, across the world. I need to be back home. I, I, just, I, just, I just feel the... the ma, you are not smiling. What happened now? What got you today? You know, I'm just feeling like I'm going to miss you guys again. And, um, but we're going to go and build UK church. You understand? And that's the heart and spirit. I'm not, I'm not just chopping life. If you follow me, you will know it's hard work to travel. It's hard work. It's hard work. Hard work. I know you will say you like the hard work. But <laughs> so there's there's nothing there's nothing anybody can tell you. Hey daddy, we gotta work together. <laughs> All right. Um, but what, what I want to say is that you guys by now, some of you should have your passports. If you have an international passport, raise up your hand. Valido, not expired. <laughs> because that question needs to be qualified. You don't have passport. If you have your passport, raise it up high. Amen. All right. Tolani, you don't have passports. Please, do <laughs> Please, you can put down your hands. So, so go and get your passports, okay? Go and get what your passports. Go and get your passports. Uh, go and get your passports. Go and get international passports. So, it's not passport photograph. <laughs> it's not. It's not start part of passport photograph. The passport you are supposed to get is you want you feel form for, and you get settled. Well, praise God. Like we told you. I was to be in Winnipeg, and I was in Winnipeg as promised, and it was a very powerful session. Yeah. It was it was practically a white community church. You know what I mean? It was a white, full of white people up and down, and they're just like. When I said it was time to close, they were like, eh? eh? It has finished. Let him continue. I'm like, we have to go home. You know? I think God has granted me utterance. Oh, yeah. so, utterance. Oh, yeah. So that at any level, you know, it's very good. It's very good. Then I, I, prayed, I prayed with some of them. Some of them have not come to church in 18 years. And it was because they had I was coming, they came. Whether they've known me before or they don't know me, I don't know. But one, at least I can tell you of two that had not come to church in 18 years. And the guy came to meet me. He said, thank you. Thank you. And what was I even talking about, Seth? I was talking about which scripture? Very casual. You know this one more gist that, that the guy, thank you. I'm like, God bless you. God bless you. I prayed with them. Prayed for strength in their spirit. 
Okay, um, I call it the beautiful benefits of boldness. That was the title. The beautiful benefits of boldness. That was the title. I took my text from Hebrews 10, 35. The beautiful benefits of boldness. The beautiful benefits. Hey, Shady, how are you there? God bless you. The beautiful benefits of boldness. Help me tell your neighbor, boldness has benefits. Yes. See, and no matter the amount of blessing of God upon your life, if you are not bold about it, you will never experience it. So that was the title of the message. I just remembered. Hebrews 10, 35. He says that, let us therefore not cast away our confidence, which had great recompense of reward, for you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might inherit the promise. He says, for the just shall live by faith. He says, for he that will come, will come and will not tarry, for the just shall live by faith. But he says, for, but um, if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure on him. He says, but we are not like them that draw back unto perdition, but them that endure to the saving of the soul. Yeah. All right. So this is it. Casting. That's 35 to 39 is what I quoted now. Um, so... 1035. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. One translation says, your boldness. You have need of boldness. No matter what God has done for you. Alright, so just so that I pray, I do my fatherly work before I travel, I want to ask us any questions. You know, I like doing that. So, you know, uh -huh. so that questions are more specific. Don't keep quiet. Your question might be something that sounds stupid until you ask it don't worry if it's in your mind it is a good question i will still teach you briefly like i normally will and i would like to pray for everyone tonight but any questions any questions i have some things i want to share but i don't want to preempt your questions first i, I want to take your questions first The beautiful benefits of boldness. I like that teaching. Then I preached also in Ontario. And there I spoke about prophetic grace. It was powerful. And I spoke about the, the grace. And the man of God brought a dimension I've never witnessed before. He called the service honey service. Honey. Honey service. It was very mysterious. But we are supposed to teach gospel anywhere we go to she. So I taught what I could teach. And then he entered honey dimensions. Not bad, but it can become fetish. You know that, so you have to be careful. You know how some people, small, small, they are taking you to <laughs> Coven. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I, my eyes shine well, well like this. I was saying, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? <laughs> you know? Before you carry me unknowingly to what I don't want to do. You just see your man of God, man of God <laughs> and honey. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, so it was a beautiful service. I had a great time, preached the word. I was happy, you know. The first church I went to, there were fewer, but they gave me more honorarium than the second church. There were plenty. It's not by size. It's not by, yes, my, it's not by size. I've learned that. It's not by size. I got times four of what I got in the bigger church. It's not by, just follow Jesus, so. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Follow, it might not make sense. Yes, sir. But follow Jesus. See, eh? when we get to heaven, it is well done, good and faithful servant. If you don't hear that statement, just go back to earth. <laughs> just say, I'm coming, Lord. Let me go back. That's what matters. I was sharing with one of my daughters today that some of us, eh, it might interest you that to know that God has boasted about you like Job. <laughs> No, yours might not even be as bad as Job because it's to the degree that you can handle God will give you. God will not let more than your capacity come to you. But God has boasted about some of us. Have you seen my son Alex? Watch him. Oh. Watch him. I'm telling you. Then you go and fall God's hand. They sit and say, the, la, 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 We're telling God. <laughs> then angels will be swinging around Jesus, uh, Jesus and God and say, don't, don't worry, don't worry, Lord. Alex will come back, Alex. <laughs> God might have boasted about some of us. Yes. I was telling the person, I said, look, sometimes eh, when I look at my life, I feel I know a lot. 
that the world needs to hear me. But if this is the people he has gathered, I'm grateful. Because God might be boasting that watch that guy that knows a lot too, and the church never blew. Mm. The meeting will come one day, say, Lord, why has our church not blown? And God will look at me, I've been boasting about you, just behave yourself. Who? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because sometimes you think you deserve something. That you, you should have gotten something. That by now something should have been this. Yes! Yes! That I, if it is true, by now I, I suppose be. Are you the maker of time? Are you the maker? Are you the judge of the earth? I'm telling you a very factual thing because sometimes, maybe if I tell you these things, you guys will know that I'm in touch with my own realities too. But some people I listen to on the program, I'm like, what is this guy telling people? I, I can tell him. It's what I tell people. It's not that I'm hiding it. But it's not like that. God judges differently. God judges differently. God judges differently. You may be thinking that it's like this. Mm. God is like that, oh. Uh -huh. Because sometimes we just think we deserve something, we should get something. By now, this is what I should do. This is what I should have gotten. Uh, by now, this is going. God, God is looking at you. Better behave yourself. Mm. I've boasted about you over Satan, oh. Oh, yeah. And this is what the Spirit of God said to me. I, I mean, we're talking about relationship with the sister. You may be thinking that by now, this type of person is the person that should be toasting you. That this, you are not interested in this kind of person. That this one is not fine enough. This one is fine enough. You know, we're just talking honestly. I said, don't look at it like that. God knows everything. Oh, if this is what your beauty can attract, thank God. Mm. At least your beauty is attracting something. Yes. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Ah, you people are not responding to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah. <laughs> we are talking hearts to hearts now. You are not answering. <laughs> It's true. Sometimes as a gentleman, you will expect that this type of sister should grieve for you. She not grieve for you. Just take it. That's what your handsomeness can carry. All your status, this is what it can achieve. <laughs> to be thinking you deserve more, it may make you enter what you can't handle. Low. Relationship bigger than you. Where you are overcompensating for what you lacked in your last relationship. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These are the truths. So if you say you know a lot, and this what it's just like saying you have CV, you have CV. And this is the kind of job they say is available to you. So this is if you are like this shift here, you say, no, no, I deserve to be there. You will be surprised that that day, <laughs> something happened yesterday. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know this life, eh? follow Bible, no? <laughs> follow Bible. So I'm going to just feel at home today. I don't want to preach heavy. Sure, you know, it's not for the lack of <laughs> 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 Because, yeah, it's not, it's not, I should be able to connect with my sons and daughters. Yes, Something happened yesterday now. We entered plane. It became. So the business class was a little free. One gentleman thought it was like that. <laughs> he just got up. Came to sit beside business people. <laughs> we were looking at him. Ah, brother. It's not like that. So, <laughs> so you know it's better you sat at the back than they say come forward. That for them to tell you to go. <laughs> the guy went to call all his family members at the back. Come for, come. I was watching. I said, let's see how this thing will go. So, funny enough, there was a, you know how the divide is. The divide is not in your hands. Just, mm. the guy went to call. So, he put his family f folks in the economy. He now moved to business. So, one other guy besides him be there. Maybe he just looked at ah, if that guy can do business, I can, I can go to business. I just saw the guy to just carry load. <laughs> they went to the front. You know, Oibo, they are very dangerous. The way they will embarrass you. Please stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Go, go, go. Inside plane. Inside plane. In the air. That's in the air. <laughs> Jesus, 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 Jesus. So, funny enough, me had slept. I just woke up. I say, where are these brethren? <laughs> Holy Spirit. Man, they were eating the economy team <laughs> with, with 
hard loaf and <laughs> salt. <laughs> uh, so in life, just take it easy, okay? Uh, take it easy. What I, what I just pray for all of us is that you don't lose sight of the big deal. Amen. There's a big picture. Don't, don't forget there's a bigger picture. You know, and we are, we are forming community here. And um, that's part of what I want to go and do in the UK, to strengthen community in the UK. And um, I just trust God that all our efforts will add up to something. Amen. God will make it add up, you know. God will make our labor of love not be in vain. Amen. The sacrifices we make, the, the efforts we con commit to, God will give us. And let me just tell you, some of you don't know it. Um, there's a pastor friend. In fact, almost, let me say, a few pastor friends I've had. One of the things I notice is that God has a way of compensating us with good homes and children. Don't play with the fact that one of the gifts that the Bible tells us clearly God gives is a good wife. Yes. And good children. For those that don't understand it, right, you can't pay for it. You know? So you're still worshiping God, especially serving God faithfully. You know, being faithful in all your doings is so important to God. All right, let me just take it. Any questions, please? Any questions? I have something. Yes, good question. Good question. Yeah. By the way, we got a keyboard, a new keyboard, not stage. Show. <laughs> and some of you will remember when I came back some time back, that I said the Spirit of God said we should buy a Nord. I don't know if you guys remember that. Do you guys remember that discussion? I was. It was somewhere around here. I said that I should put my that he said put my status and be my picture status and not. If you have not fulfilled that, me have not filled my own side. If you don't have man of God's status, I was talking to leaders, so it's not everybody do, but I said it then that and it's important. I can't forget that day. He said by not. I, I, I'm like, okay. I didn't know how it would happen. But just before we went forward, and here we are. So I have two questions. Any other question? Let me just see your hand up first. Any questions? Solani, you don't have question with your dreads. You look very responsible with it. Very nice. Yeah. God bless you. Sit down. You know I like dreads. Are you aware? Did they tell you? So you know what is going on. Very good. All right. Any questions, please? Yeah? All right. Start taller. Shoot, man. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, it can be a blessing to you. Um, actually, okay. what happened was, Peter was not good. Because, like, this time, I was in the second school, which was, okay, they had a program, like, on all night. So, I was having a projection based on prayer and then, so, it was not like, it was suggested in the architecture. I was 
something I want to read, and I believe I say I have a better um, assignment, something like that. So I was just thinking what that may mean, but yes, exactly. All right, very good. I'll respond to you. Amen. Let's clap for that. Your question, please. Right. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. So, uh, I was going to the and uh, part of what they brought up in the course was that you can be strategic with your life. And they mentioned that uh, the uh, strategic life you need to focus on is your relationship for the community and society, your job, learning and finances, then your hobbies, your interests, and like uh, relaxation, then your personal care. Then uh, the man gave a corporate strategic approach to having strategy for your life. And I looked at the Harvard business letter, I'm like, this guy, you don't know this now, my pastor. Mm. Because I could remember when you mentioned one time that you need to like compartmentalize your life. That's right. You need to know that if you are succeeding uh, in terms of your intellectual growth, which is in terms of your education, it doesn't mean that your relationship life should lag behind. And that doesn't mean that you should be a misfit in the society, which means that you should be relevant in your community. So the strategy the guy gave was more or less like literature. I didn't really see a way practically use it because I also felt like he too, if what he read, he was reading out. Yes. And I I put it I put it down because I knew that my pastor knows this more than you. So I want I want to ask that how do you strategically lead your life that as you are as you've grown in terms of our uh, spiritual capacity, the family growth is going along, the educational growth is going is going along, and then you still you still have time to go and play golf, and then you still have time to go to the beach to go and relax. Because in my own head, the strategy that guy gave us it is not is not real. It was like two plus two is four. So therefore, anytime you see two plus two, it should be equal to four. I mean, I'm like. This still will not work. So my question simply is, how do you lead a balanced life and make sure that while you are growing in one strategic life unit, maybe in your relationship, your career growth is not behind, neither is your spiritual growth behind. Thank you, sir. Wow. The two questions are powerful. Um, does anybody have another question? I want to just take questions so I can enter, zoom it down. Jari Zola, successful program. Congrats once again. Amen. You have question? You have bar? All right, shoot, girl. Amen. by the word undermining yourself. So before I did that particular one, I had I had trouble with pushing it out because I was not sure it was going to come out well. And seeing that it was a success made me understand that God has more to do with me. Well how best can I bring that thing so Okay, fantastic question too. Amen. And then one more, one more. I'll just take one more. Any one more? All right, she's here on the porch. Bless you. Then. Bless you. Hey, yeah. Okay. Very good question. 
But how do you know when to, how come you should keep waiting, praying and expecting for when to see if it comes, if it comes, if it doesn't come, glory be to God. That's this particular question that is really bothering you, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So let's just submit all the questions to the wisdom of God. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we want to talk about these questions and we ask for your wisdom. That in navigating through them, your will will and your wisdom will be revealed Amen. and that your name will be glorified. Amen. Take absolute charge of our analyses, our conversations, Amen. and specifically the things you've been prompted in my heart to speak to, Lord. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> All right. Um, very lovely questions. Some of them seem easy. And I'm not going to try to make them more complicated than they are. Um, you know, I just want to say something. I think the, 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 that... Hmm. So you see, I feel that... I feel that Satan has done a good job. Listen, no, don't take that part and run away. And, <laughs> uh, cause, uh, I feel that Satan has done a good job in causing chaos into this world. Such that the world we now live in, it is abnormal to be normal. Mm. I don't know if you can understand what I'm trying to say. If you are normal, you will live an abnormal life. For it to be normal, you have to be abnormal. I mean what I'm saying, and I know what I'm saying. Just like I was telling someone this, but I said, Nigeria's corruption is corrupt. Do you get that? That is, corruption is that they gave you money, you took out of it. When your corruption is corrupt, they gave you money, you didn't do anything. I, I don't know if you understand. That's, your corruption has become corrupt, fantastically corrupt. And I'll explain why I said these words before I finish this as, as. Um, For the way you feel when you teach, let me just tell you something. One of the things that happens to us when we give light or life to other people, especially with a confirmed feedback, is that it increases your own light. I'm sure anybody who has brought a brief charge will know that feeling. You know, when you bring light or hope or encouragement or people you've done well somewhere and you get it because it's possible you did well, they didn't give you a feedback. It's very possible. And that's one of the wicked things Satan does to people. Yes, when you do well and people when you love and you are not loved back. It's a, it's a it's, a, it's like life being held to ransom. The circle did not go complete. So they've trapped it. You are loving so that you'll be weary of well-doing when you don't get your results. So when you get feedback, it's a blessing. When people tell you things. Sometimes, I even break that jinx. Me, I will ask, how was it? And not because I didn't know I killed it. But so that, number one, I stay humble and not deceive myself. Get the feedback. When... The praise is more than ratio. I know that this one is just more than ratio praise. You know that there is appropriate ratio praise. When people praise you more than ratio, you can tell that this one, you are not, touch, you are not touching. I, I heard you. I thank you. But I know where to gauge my, inside my chest. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So all your, I've known which part I've taken. And left. so then, it's a blessing to have feedback and it's a fulfillment. However, three things happen when you preach. And when you get such um, feedback and encouragement, number one is that you need to be careful for the things you preached about. You'll be tested on them. Just get ready. As you are saying it, just be waiting, you know, it's coming. No, that is practical. Anything you preach, just be marking time. It's coming. To you. It's coming. It's a matter of time. And secondly, is be careful for deception. Mm. You might think that you have done well. That's the time to stay humble mm. you know, and then recalibrate and realize that you were just a vessel. And when they were bowing to Jesus Christ on the donkey, it is silly for the donkey to think it is him they are bowing for. <laughs> uh -huh. 
So when Jesus Christ came down from the donkey, that's when we knew who they were bowing for. <laughs> but as long as Christ is on you, they will bow for you because of Christ. So you have to be careful that you don't get lost in this. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And that's not something you fake. You just need to be straight about it. This is the Lord. I'm a donkey. And I carry the master well. Good. But outside of him, there's no comeliness to you. you know, so that should humble you to not be deceived. And then um, the third thing I would say that usually happens is that you need to go and recalibrate another message. So what happens is that life is like a wave. It goes like this. Comes down. There's going to be an up again. So for a while, they might not call you again. And if they call you, it's still the wave still up. You understand? They are calling you. They are calling you. Your wave is going high. Look at these Some waves are like more hills. Like this now. They call you now. Like frequency. Some are even sharper. Cha -cha. The same. I don't know. Are you guys getting what I'm saying? Yes, Okay, so there's, there's the one that goes like this, like life reading. You know this, what do you guys call that thing inside? Uh, inside the hospital. ECG. Chup, chup. Chup, 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 chup. Uh -huh. So you went high and came down like, like uh, forex, forex graph. <laughs> <laughs> but there is the wave that goes like this. Do you understand? Uh -huh. That one is longer. So they are calling you, they are calling you, they are, you are raving, you are raving. To stay there. Eh? You have to stay connected to the source. Mm -hmm. So you have to. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, please. When I used to see some men cough, I used to, what I was making him cough. Now he's. I said, "Kilo, kilo, kilo, je." But now I'm now I'm now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, 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 what I'm just trying to say is that you, you need to be weary of not feeling like as if you've arrived. You are very far from it. Just keep enjoying the focus. But it's a, it's a thrust. It's also a pointer to your calling. It's a pointer to your calling. If people keep telling you you have a gift of communicating right thoughts according to scriptures, don't ignore it like as if they are lying to me, Joe. You know, women don't quickly believe they are beautiful. She, you know, is women don't usually believe they are beautiful when they tell you are beautiful. It's a lie, Joe. It's not. It's not lie. You are fine. All right. Uh -huh. Believe it easily. So it might be a calling that you want to respond to and deepen on it, and just keep taking advantage to respond to opportunities that are like that. It's one powerful thing. Let me tell you something. And the useful reason why you are living is to find your purpose and fulfill it. That's the only chance heaven has given you to still be alive today. If you don't find that purpose and you die, that's why they will beat you in heaven. You will wash floor. But with all that we sent to you, with everything we told you to do, you did not do anything. Mad Baby, but you will find purpose in this heaven by first. <laughs> eh? Eh? I'm telling you, it might, I might not be able to tell what kind of thing it is, but what I know from scripture is that there will be a reward for those that fulfill purpose here. So, so don't just live life and say, I'm doing it for you. I'm not doing anything for anybody. Everybody will get his reward. Mm. Everybody. Babe. So, do you get my point? Uh -huh. So whether you don't feel like doing it, whether you feel like doing it, whether you, oh God, everybody will collect. Everybody. And God is not even going to remember your wrongdoing. Once you make heaven, he's not going to remember that you made it bad. He's only going to scale what is good that is left. So it's not a case of, uh, but God, is that bad tonight? God is, the Bible says he has taken our wrong and thrown them into the sin of forgiveness, or forgetfulness. So it's not going to be counting that you did not fetch enough meat in that car. No, 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 no. That's not his issue. It's what is the quality of your work. Mm. For every man's work will be tested. And it's what remains of it that will be your basis for reward. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So keep doing it with a good heart. Keep yielding yourself. Stay humble about it. And you will find out that God is leading you somewhere with all of this. Because it's in you. It's on you. Your family already has a calling grace. There's a grace in your running family, you know. And you may have, you may have meandered there. It doesn't matter with God. His giftings and his callings are without repentance. So just keep forging ahead. And I can tell you that based on what I know about you, you have a place on the pulpit. I just don't know how and where and when and how, but you have something on you. 
Okay? Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. Your man of God. Yes, that's 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 right. So enough on the book. And we are contesting the daily council. Today's today's council, everything. They are sharing fantastic. 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 Very good. Very, very good. You know, you you, you thank you for that. That's and that you know, it's just like when God uses us powerfully, we can trap the glory on ourselves mm. and refuse to release it to God. Do you understand? When God blesses you or uses you like that, you know you have a choice of not telling them my pastor is anything. You can just tell them, it's God, oh, it's God. You see, I studied last week, you know. Uh -huh. But it's, it's a lot of... Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful. God bless you. I will see more of such grace. Amen. Hallelujah. So... <clears throat> So with your question, Shady, brilliant question, you know, life is, um, so I, I will tell you that there are, what I've come to learn, and I'm saying this truthfully, I've come to learn that there is not one way to live life. Mm. There's not one way. There are no way to live life. In fact, I believe that every individual has the opportunity of inventing his own method to excellent life. This is my belief. There's not one way. However, the common indicator is just like saying there are many ways to solve a maths question. But don't come out with the wrong answer. I don't know if you get what I'm going to say. If you use algebra, if you use almighty formula, if you use quadratic equation, shall get answer. Do you get what I'm going to say? Eh? Cosine to, cosine, tan, tan cosine theta. Thank you. If you use any of them, just get who is asking the question? Okay, it's him. Who just gets the right answer? And um, one of the things I can tell you categorically is that um, at least there are four ideas I can suggest to strategic living. Number one, find a mentor. You know, that, that word I just said is so useful. Find a mentor. Your mentor reduces your challenges. Just find a mentor. Be humble. It also reflects your humility. Find a mentor. Number two, discover your vision. Very important, you know. Discover your vision. Then practice continuous evaluation. Practice continuous evaluation. That is, don't evaluate once and leave it there. The, the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that extra. A lot of people are very lazy to evaluate. Most people's undoing is their own selves, their laziness. Not a sin, it's a habit. A habit. So practice continuous evaluation. And then for number four, Stay bold. Stay bold and connected. Your boldness has a lot to do. There's no power that is coming from heaven again. There's no gandusa ganduse that exists outside what Christ has done. All that God will do, he has done. But it is boldness that will make us experience it. Brother, that sister is waiting. It's boldness that will determine if she will live with you. Amen. There is nothing you see outside that cannot be packed in your house. It's boldness. It's boldness. It's boldness. A lot of things will be tied to what you do not dare. And what you do not try. Places you do not go to. You know? So boldness is very key. Stay bold. Stay bold. Stay bold. Now, let me tell you one of the things that can help your boldness. Righteousness. Proverbs 28, verse 1. The righteous shall be as bold as a lion. Righteousness helps us to be bold. When you are wrong, eh, when you are in unrighteousness or you are in wrongdoing, your confidence is challenged. 
I don't know if you know what I'm saying. Yes. Some of you, just that you have wronged me alone, you don't feel like talking to me. Abi? Yes, it's normal. When you have done what is wrong, you don't feel like talking to the person. Second thing that challenges your boldness is ignorance. Nothing makes you as concerned or confused like your ignorance. Number four that confuses your boldness is wrong association. Even if, you know, if your friends say you don't know, you will doubt yourself. And number five, uh, number four, over validating your past, especially your mistakes. Those are things that, you know, when you are sure that, ah, that thing happened to me, I know what happened to me, you don't feel like trying again, you know? So you want to watch out for those subtle tricks of the devil. So to be strategic, you need to get a mentor, a mentor that is worth following. All of us are products. Of, don't tell me that Jesus is your mentor. You know how some used to lie to themselves. Have you ever seen Jesus? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, uh -huh. Jesus, is not, Jesus himself said, "Go to the earth. Go, go to." You remember when that rich man was telling Moses and Abraham that send this man to go back and and Moses, uh, Abraham said, "Look, there is Moses on the earth. There are people on the earth." For if a dead person comes from the dead to preach to the eye of brother, they will not believe. That's what he said now. Luke 16. So, yeah, I've shared that. And I just feel that what that guy said is true. And you are right. But in practical sense, these things are the things that will work. You know? Find a mentor. A mentor reduces your learning experience. There are a lot of things you will just be using head to judge bars, bulls, bars. A mentor will just tell you, don't follow the... That place is swamp. Oh. Yeah, don't, swamp. don't do that. Oh. This place is like this. So, oh. If you don't have a mentor, you'll be tormented. Yeah. That's just the truth. <laughs> so reduce your stress. Reduce your personal confusion. Find a mentor. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Find a mentor. You know, one of the greatest things in life, all of us were born human. But there are some humans that look like they are extra human. It's not that anything. It's that they were trained. Mm. They were trained. It's the quality of training you expose yourself to that will determine the quality of life you will live. Yes, so one of the prayers you pray is to God to God to give you good mentoring. The way I was trained, I was trained to, to pay attention to details. I was trained to weaponize anything. I was trained to turn anything into a weapon. <laughs> you are looking like, seriously, sir. <laughs> I was not trained to fight. I was trained to kill. I'm thinking of how you will die, not how you injure when I'm fighting you. I mean, that's why I don't like fighting. Because I, my orientation is to you die. And I, I make sure you die. <laughs> Look how you are looking at me like <laughs> I don't know if you get what I'm trying to get. The training you get is what will inform the quality of your life. So you pray God to give you good training. Somebody is really better than you. Those eggheads you see that you are admiring, they are not better than you. I mean, that's really to anybody. You know? But some of us are too lazy. When they are training, you feel offended. You feel like as if, oh, I can't keep myself. The way, the way life is, it's not by how you feel, sir. It's where you are going to that would matter how you respond. It's not by your feeling. So you wake up. When you get to the future, like my... Late grand, I mean, mother in law will say, she'll say, Do you know what that means? That means in a prayer or a course, you will send one back to me. When you are being trained, you are being trained, like, let's do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. You know, I know the way this life is. When your mentor is telling you to do something, if it's a good one, if the first time he tells you, you did not respond well, he won't want to tell you too many times again. Yes, sir. You just think that you know everything. Don't worry. Because people appreciate when they don't need to coerce you to do what is good for you. Yes, sir. Ah, what is good for you? Oh. Ah. That's why it's amazing why some of us you know, feel frustrated when we tell you to do something that to help us. And you can't do what will help us. Because we've checked you. You can't even do what is good for you, you, for yourself. You can't, you know, somebody says, I can't dance to save my life. That's how some people can, can walk 
to save another. What? They're just there. So it's the training. If early in life you have been told this is important, this is how to go, some of us will be better than where we are. Mm. True. True. Some people, as I'm talking, and they've resigned faith that this is how they will be, and they can't kill themselves. Instead of going through the fire early and coming out better, fire looks like it wants to kill them. That's how they pass it on to their children. Mm. Like that. That's what I'm saying, clearly. 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 Because that person you are calling wicked, we will see whether it's wicked or not wicked in the future. Mm. I don't know if you get my point. Yes, yes. The discipline you don't want to take it now, you will take it in regret later. Mm. Life is, in, is ways on two skills. The pain of discipline and the pain of regret. Use your pain. Pain of discipline is now. Pain of regret is later. Play now, you regret later. Pray now. You enjoy it later. So I, I just want to urge us to find a good mentor, a suitable mentor. Yes, sir. First of all, I believe that everybody understand my voice should have me as his mentor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes. first. Yes. You can have others, though. But first, primary mentor. Because if you don't have me as a mentor, you're asking me a question. I will, I will know. I will know. And I will mark you. So, you know, there are some of us, you say, my mentor is T.D. Jakes. When you have problem, you know where to meet him. <laughs> That's how it is. That's how it is. You understand? So I told one of my friends like that. He said, My pastor, I said, Does your pastor know you? If you call him now, does he know his number? Ah, that thing touched the guy. He changed church. Change church. I'm serious. Do you know what he did? He changed church and ensured that he was the PA to the senior pastor. Wow. Yes. I'm talking about somebody some of us may know. Dotu uh, Tani Momo. Um, Dari Tani Momo, sorry. Dari Tani Momo. Gentleman. Lovely, handsome gentleman. I, because he was in a church. He said, my pastor. I said, well, does he know you? <laughs> he, he changed church and rose to the highest level. Mm. He understood because when excellent people are excellent, they don't give up until they get their result. You know that kind of thing? Ah, you challenge them. Ah, nice one. That's the word. Nice one, nice one. He didn't tell me, oh, next I was just hearing his waves in that church. Bah, ah, bah, bees, bows, bass, bass. Pia to the senior pastor. Yeah. Look, some of us, eh, you, the way you are, your drive for excellence is too low. You don't even plan to do anything outstanding in life. You didn't carry first. You never got an award. You, you are, okay. The extent that now is free, you have given up on collecting an award. Stand out. No Jesus, thank you. No, nobody will clap for you. You know in, in primary school, they will clap for you. Excellent, best students. This one. You have been clapping for people. You are not planning that anybody should clap for you. And that's how you want to pass it down to your children. I will talk to you the truth. There's nothing you can do to me. At least have a plan. To inspire at least the much you can. Collect awards. Look, if you're in this ministry, by now, you should be planning your own concept of your own idea. You should be having an idea churning in your brain. It, okay, you don't know how to do program. You By now, you should be writing a blog. Not talking a blog. You write it. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Eh? Okay, they say choose shoe. You still prefer the one that the edges are wedged out. <laughs> choose shirts. You choose bossy corner. Look, I just want you to have an... Because the challenge I will have is that you will think you've been around here long enough and that when it's time for distributing responsibilities, we should consider you. But I'm going to have to make my judgment based on how much of what I've taught you has affected you. Hmm. You want to choose a perfume. This one is 2 five. This one is 3,000. This one, the man told you this is original. This one is fake. Now you have 5,000. But 500 naira will make you make a poor judgment. Some of us, our preferences is just to keep, you know, living life like there are no consequences. Let me tell you something. I don't know if you are as playful as me. But I can tell you that the best way to think about life is in terms of consequences. That's the best way to think about life. Consequences. Pros and cons. You know? 
Leaders don't think in terms of actions or processes or even efforts. We think in terms of outcomes and consequences. You know? So, that's that. Wow. Is this 8 o'clock? Wow. So, um, without undermining yourself, that was the next question. I think it's a great thing you are asking that question because I feel that you never really know yourself until people help you know you. Yeah. That's the truth. This life, eh, we are like mirrors. Proverbs, is it 21, 17 or 17, 21, says that as water answers to the face of a man, so does a friend to his friend. I think so. It should be 21, 17 or 17, 21. Help me double check it. So what that means is that I don't know myself until I see water. Water is like mirror. Of that time, you know, when you look at that, you should see yourself. If you see something else, it's not mirror. <laughs> so you look into water, you should see yourself. Wow, this is what I look like. The Bible is saying that you can't know yourself socially until you see a friend. So your friend mirrors you. Your fi- your friend helps you know who you are. That's why you should watch out for friends that don't give you feedback. Friends that don't give you feedback are dangerous. Because your true reflection is in the feedback of your friend. Please, do you guys get what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. And when I say feedback, I'm not just talking about self-praise and appraisals. And any friend that is always giving you woto woto in the name of telling you the truth is not a good friend. Mm-hmm. And the one that is also always giving you compliments, compliments, is also not a good friend. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? A real friend will speak to the truth of the heart. We we'll find, even without the training of learning how to do hamburger package, you know hamburger yes. presentation of criticism. You put the loaf, you put the burger, and you put the bur- uh, loaf again. So it tells you something good about yourself. Fantastic. I just wish that you added this. But overall, it was good. Please, does anyone understand what I did? Yeah. So, so it's good to have a feedback friend. When your friends don't give you feedback, they are denying you of something precious. If you ever teach God's word, you probably will like a feedback if you ever know what I'm saying. Some of you, you are spouses to people that minister and you don't know how important that feedback is. Your relevance is tied to your feedback. He was teaching, you were not there, you did not listen. He said, you should still love me, now you should still love me. The day he was of his own shining, you did not come, continue. So, in not undermining yourself, I agree with you that it's a very important thing. Two things I will tell you. You need to develop leadership skills. What you have done, you have shown capacity to a degree. It's like trying to travel from here to London. You will agree with me that a car is a vehicle. But that car can't go beyond the airport. Mm -hmm. I will take you from here to the airport. Can't take you from the airport to London. So the vehicle, which includes the people, the processes, the resources, that took you from where you were before to what you were able to achieve last Saturday is not what you will need to take you to the next level. Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. So why we thank God for this level is like getting to the airport. What's next? You will need another kind of vehicle. If you are going to go further out, the car is good. In fact, you can even get to London with a car. <laughs> it's just that you might, <laughs> you might not get it on time. Uh-huh. Do you understand? Eh, it's not airport you will follow Luther. You know, you follow Kutonu, you first of all face somewhere around Badagri. You know? Eh, you understand that side? Eh, then go forward. Then you keep going. <laughs> Afla. <laughs> Afla fly over. You go through Afla fly over. Eh, and then continue like that. So because some of us, what happens is that the last technique you used to make some success is what you want to repeat to make another success. That vehicle has expired. Are you getting what I'm trying to say yes, here? Sir. Yes, sir. So you'll now be confused. What is going on? I did the last time. It did not work. You have to know that a new set of rules have applied your new level. Do you get my point? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. So you have to, you know, find the new resources. And the way to do that is to leverage on the ones you have gathered already from the last list. So you don't have to be the only brain box contemplating the new movements. The friends you have now can now leverage based on the, the history of your last success. How can we do the next one? So you are just going to coordinate the resources you've been able to gather. That's why we pray. So that the right people will gather around us. 
you'll be surprised that some people have one relationship, one has one friend, that what you spent money doing last time, you might not need to spend money doing again. Sure you get uh, uh, So that's how that works. And be confident about your bigger journey. Let me tell you something. This is useful for everybody. And I'm going to use that to teach. Let me answer the last question. Just remind me. Everybody must have a clearer picture of his future in mind. Don't be developing your future gradually. Have a clear-cut goal of your identity, who you want to be in reality, as in eventually in life. Don't, what I mean by that is, don't wait for the next success to define who you are. There must be a desirable picture of your future that makes you pay the price to get there. Do you get what I mean? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So you must keep that future in mind. Don't celebrate the current you and forget the picture. That picture keeps making you aspire. This is not where I am going to. So even if you got a G wagon now, it's not where I'm going to. That picture must remain bigger than your present progress. Do you get my point? Yes, yeah. Did I answer your question? Did I speak to the question? Yes. I think I did, yeah. Yeah. And finally, amen. And um, yeah. And finally, on Minister Shilly's question about um eh? Yes, I wrote it here. So there are about four responses to that. Number one, when you notice that you have been waiting for too long or waiting for something from God, there are four responses I can offer. Number one, move on. Leave that thing. Do you understand? Leave that thing and just continue living your life. That thing is not the summary of your life. Mm. You have over, maybe God is trying to tell you, you are over pausing for me. That, you are over waiting for that thing. It's like as if that thing comes, your life is fulfilled. It's not true. No one event, no one person can bring summary to your life. So if no one, and I mean that absolutely, I mean that like absolutely. God is a continuous moving God. If you stand still, he will leave you. So don't ever celebrate that you are waiting for God. That statement may not be exactly correct, you know. It's a good thing to say that um, whatever you are trusting God for, you are trusting God for. Oh my by Lord, don't worry. I know, I know what I may have an idea of what you mean. By that I mean that there are some events that can help us get a new level altogether. For example, I say it without disrespect. You know, maybe you, you're trying to get to join your wife abroad and all that. Just move on. I think it's good to say it here again. Be doing what you'll be doing there, here. Nobody knew I was in Canada yesterday. I'm still the same person here. Wherever I am, doesn't matter. What I'm doing is what I'm doing. And I'm not seeing my mother. So be doing what you are doing that will add value to your life. Don't, I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. Because you can post your life just for that event. And when that event comes, you don't have meaning again. Tastelessness oh, yeah. of success. Thank you, Mama. So, I, and I can tell you that God did not forget what you are waiting for. It might be something on your behalf now so that you don't go and misbehave when you're there. So just be enjoying the progress you would have made if you are really there. Hmm. Uh -huh. Because being there is about... I know. <laughs> being there is about the mind. I was in Canada, Winnipeg, uh, Kineko, Kineko. My mind was in Nigeria. Aha. Hey. It is about the mind. When you get there, you realize, is this the Canada? Is this what people want to die for? <laughs> True to God. I looked again. Do I want to stay? Huh. I said, there's nothing to stay here. And okay, for the sake of having it, you know, I used to, I believe a principle. It's better to have it than not use it. I not use it than I not need it than to need it and not have it. For that sake, I can say, okay, I want to get a, another quality. You know, this extra quality is not a bad idea. But I thought again about it that there are some people that are not allowed to have extra quality. Someday I hope to serve it, this, the government of this country. I hope to. And having double passport is not, is not very right at a level. Not every level. So somehow I'm thinking that, do I really need to boast I have certain quality, quality? I really hope to serve this country to a degree. Yes, I, I do. That's very honestly. You know? Not because it is a greater honor, but it is greater honor to serve humanity. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm. So I'm just saying that whatever thing is keeping you transfixed can be the devil. Mm. What you think you are waiting for God for, God might be waiting for you. Mm. You know? And that's one. Number two response to it is that, Keep being busy. Just keep doing your... Keep doing what you're doing. Do you understand? There are other things to take up in life than just a single event, you know. And I, I don't know if I'm speaking to the real issue, but 
you know, just keep being busy. Don't let one event define your experience of life. No, just keep being busy. I was telling my dad, my daughter today, I said, the way the life works that I understand, what is not in your control is not in your control. Eh, Abi, if it's not in your control, you want to become a witch to control it. You will apply witchcraft soon. Because if it's bothering you so much, you will soon become a witch. You know what witchcraft is? Manipulation of events and people. That's what is witchcraft is. Hello, do you guys see what yes, I'm saying? Sir. Did you see that guy that sacrificed chicken today? That, I mean, yesterday, today, against the former governor of yes, Kogi State. Did you guys see that video? Yes, sir. That's witchcraft now. Yes, he doesn't have to say I'm a witch. But carry the tortoise, poured uh, Siman Shinap on it. And somebody was carrying a pot, they put the tortoise in. That's witchcraft. You don't need to be initiated. Just that intelligence alone is witchcraft. Witchcraft simply means manipulation of events and people to favor your selfish cause. Finish. That's why we say sometimes women are witch. We don't mean it's, uh, it's just that, yeah, that you don't have to fly to be a witch. You don't need it. When a woman wants something, she wants something, she will maneuver events and people, including tears, to get what she wants. When she now finishes, ah, what I'm telling you, may you not explain it to her. When she finishes getting what she wants, she will do, <laughs> and she knows she in her heart, idiots. Do you understand? She has got what she wants, and she goes, ete, ete, kete. You know what I mean? It's like that. So I'm just simply saying that you, you need to learn that some events are, can make you enter desperate mode. Don't enter desperate mode. Just keep anything that is making you trapped in thanksgiving. It's not of God. No, just keep giving God thanks. Your life moves forward. I'm, I know what I'm saying, and I think I know what you may be talking about. Yes. Just move on. Live it like as if it ain't happen. Cast your cares on him, truly. For you to still be worrying. Do you know worry is a sin? Hmm. Worry is a sin, oh. It's, not, it's a sin as bad as fornication. You say, it's just, it's, I will show you. Do you want to show you? I can show you. You know, there's something I tell you that. It's just a Bible. I'm not, I'm not just sharing theory. Worry is wrong. It's as bad as fornication. Where is it, Pastor? I will show you. Now, do you want to see? Show you, you should see. <laughs> Let's look at scriptures now, Abby. Just one or two. Let's take a look. Give me um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Let's start from verse 3. Worry is wrong. I say, I just worried. I worry. That your thing that you're calling analysis, I'm just thinking. Be sure it's thinking, no. I'm not worrying. <laughs> Some people are professionals. They have worry World Cup. See. <laughs> Let's read. And I entreat thee also, true your fellow. Rejoice in the Lord always, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but do everything by prayer and supplication of thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall be given us. Can you give me that verse? Can you give me that verse six in Amplified Classics? What is a hand? Let's look at it. Thank you. Yeah, let's look at it. Do not, Do not fret, fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, every request, present giving, continue to make your wants known to God. And it says. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite requests, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I start with this scripture. I'll show you tomorrow. So what I want to show you from here is that this is the disposition and the default position of a Christian. 
where he is free from anxiety. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, sir. This is the mode a true Christian should walk. Ah, I know it's not easy. Ah, ah I've been through it. Ah. Looking back now, I'm thinking, thank God I survived it. Days when they will tell us, you come into that hall, you've not paid 600 In the next 48 hours, you must produce 600K. Even today, 600K is not beans. Am I correct? Yes. Now imagine when 600K was 600K. Hmm. Hey. 600,000. Even now, 600,000 is not, is not, is not boot rats. Yes. Am I correct? Yes, sir. I want to show you two scriptures more. Hold on. So what we see here is that God is telling us, don't worry. I know you have needs. I know you have everything. But listen to me. Don't worry about it. Are you listening? Yes, sir. I know you said yes. But I want your spirit to say yes one more time. Because it's not easy. To see problem in the face. I told last two week, last time I was here that I said I did not know that that was what God was training me on. I will hear him tell me, do a fast. I will come a fast. Oh yeah, me. Any time I talk about money, he never answered me. Quiet. Quiet. I had you now, Lord. Before God, man, I can't be lying to you. You are me rent. <laughs> rent. <laughs> rent is real. God is my way. He never answered. He said, damn it, long. If I say anything after that, he will answer me. You like talking about money, Lord. As she, as far as he was concerned, it was a done deal. Go and declare. You know when he was telling Moses, why are you asking me which way should they should go? Each time I stood up and said, we will pay you next 48 hours. He never failed. Never. I'm here. It's not a story. For over 10 years. He never failed. Could you me? He didn't know what they get there. If I had gotten it, Mama Shere Kiri. Look at my white hair now. You think he's play? I was bothered. Until he told me, do you know? That this position you put yourself into is that you don't believe I can do the job. Lord, it's not that I don't believe. I know I'm a very practical person. Just tell me, just tell me what you want me to do. You won't answer me. Bam! You will you leave I. Imagine if you tell me, go to the mouth of a fish and take it on. I will know that. I will keep fish. I will keep fish. I will keep pressing him out. You want? You want? Bobby fish? Let me show you two more scriptures. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's go to Matthew 6. So I'm just trying to share with you here that worry is a very terrible disaster. It undermines God. It underrates God. Matthew 6, 22. Quickly, please. So I want you yeah. to see. I want you to try to see. It says, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Okay? But if your eye is unsound, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the very light in you, your conscience is darkened, how dense is that darkness? Let's go on. It says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, and, or he will stand by be devoted to the one and despise and be against the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. It says, wait, wait, wait. Deceitful riches, money, possessions, or whatever is trusted in. Go on. Let's go on. Therefore, I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy, anxiously, and worried. Are you listening? Yes, Who is talking? Jesus. I like that. You get the spirit. It's Jesus uh -huh. talking. You know, there was this argument about what Paul said versus what Jesus said. I don't think there should be. I, I don't know why people listen. I don't know. I think it's a very simple matter. Anyway, eh? Yeah? Yeah. Hey, I'm coming to it. I'm coming to it, yes. Therefore, I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy and anxiously and worried about your life. He said, what you shall eat or what you shall drink or about your body 
what you shall put on is not life greater in quality than food and the body far above and more excellent than clothing let's go on i'm going to answer your question that's a good question look at the birds of the air they neither sow nor reap nor gather into bands and yet your heavenly father keeps feeding them are you not worth much more than they wait wait the answer to the question is coming out small small that are you not if you know your worth you will not worry i don't know if you get that it is the knowledge of your worth when you know who you are you will stop to worry listen i know sometimes that you are uh, you know i use one word sometimes i said shamelessness i don't know if you remember most times what worry for is shame mm. <laughs> like of it, 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 i promise you Oh, new. you know when they say hey, oti kuri? Yeah. I don't know if you know what they say. Yeah. Oti, oti sign. Uh -huh. That sense of moti, I don't bother. Uh, it's because you still have personality. Hmm. I don't know if you understand reputation. You don't want it to die. That's what I'm saying. You have taken the concerns of your life. You have taken charge. I want to be charged. And it's not wrong. So that's the balance that some of us are trying to teach. That while you have committed it to God, you still are careful. That, I mean, God's hands. Listening for his instruction. Listening for his instruction. He's guiding me. He's that. He's, and I'm that briefly. I will still. Tonight we will not go take too much. Eh? We'll go soon wrap up and make a just stitch. It's in my heart. Eh? Yes, sir. <laughs> but you know, I can't just go like that four weeks yes. and not see you. Yes. yes, sir. So. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So the thing I want to point out is, is that you still have reputation. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Oh, Jesus. Listen, oh. That step that got you into the place where you don't want to be ashamed, eh? if you did not pray about it, you will not have the confidence to ask him for what next. Mm. You got there, and, and I'm saying, even in that condition, now that you're hearing what I'm telling you, rest. Did you hear that? Just yes, yes, rest. Look, it's a training program. What do I call it? A training program. Look, you know, I told you I've done this for over 12 years. I've seen it work. Trust me, I, I, Mama was saying some one time back. She said that she did not quite learn finances in virtues, you know, maybe from personal years. But she said because I didn't teach finances until my hands can handle it. I, I, I don't know if you hear what I just said or heard what I just said. Trust me, it's a training program to trust God on resources. It is a training program where you know that He will come through. Hagen was sharing his story. Kenneth E. Higgins of blessed memory. He had his bill to pay. His car was on mortgage. He needed, I mean, on, is it mortgage? He bought the car and was to be paid in the bank. So, it, it was due. And they told him that if you don't pay by 2.30, after extending, you know, they've given you extension, extra extension, extra extension. By 2.30, if you don't pay, we're going to collect the car back. You forfeited your money, all those type. You know, those guys are terrible. He said he waited. He was waiting and saying, Lord. Because Jesus appeared to him eight times. That's a lot of... That's a lot of leverage in life. That's a lot of leverage, sir. He said, Jesus told him one time, he said, don't you ever get into the trap of giving glory to yourself or get into the trap of worry. Jesus said so. I believe it because he said so here too. I'm coming. Two o'clock, he sent his son, Pastor Hagen, to go and check for the mail. They check the mail, nothing dropped. You know what those times that mail, they, mail, when you see, have a mail, is a lot. You either have a bill or a balance. You know what I mean? He checked. There was nothing. And the bank was too close to 10. This was two o'clock. 2.10, somebody just went in. Just one mail dropped it. Yeah. And Hagen would never tell anybody that he's owing or he needs money. You know that kind of thing. He can preach, raise an offering, but he will not come and tell you I need money. Not once, not twice. So. He said at the spot of 210, he had a vehicle drop a meal into the box. He said he did not even send his son to go and check the message. He did not even open the envelope till he got to the bank. I didn't... As he opened it, it was the exact amount. He just brought it out. You know when you don't want to even take a chance to say disappointed? You know, if he had opened it, it would, it would confirm he was not sure. Or 
I don't know why God doesn't come in before you needed him. He will enter that time. Okay, why didn't he follow the fourth people, the fourth man? Into the, why didn't he follow these three Hebrew boys? Before? They were making him up. We're going to kill you. We're going to burn you. Uh, those, and he was there. Why didn't he come in until that last time? I don't know. It's a training program, guys. That, that's what I, what I want to even talk about tonight. It's a training program. God is training us. We're his children. Yes, sir. We must come to the point where we truly practice that we trust him as a father. It's a training program yes, that sir. God can take care of me more than I can take care of myself. Sir, I stayed in a hotel throughout this day and juicy hotels. And I never lacked. Pastor, it was I gave you some dollars to drop today's shit. The small change I was able to bring, Abby. Just small. I'm t what I spent. Mama used to, Mama likes traveling with me because she knows it's a good day. She's here. That when, and I just come, I'll be doing like as if nothing. When I show you supplies, <laughs> let me tell you something. It's a training program. If you know pass up, you know go see blessing. It's a training. You want to stick, keep trusting. It's a training program. Any man of God that you see that is authentic in Jesus Christ has passed through this thing. Hmm. And I'm not only talking about man of God. This thing comes like you know, some people can't leave their job and resign and serve God. What, what, you said we should work. That any man that doesn't work doesn't have food. That's what they will tell God. It's a training program to take your eyes off that thing hmm. and let God be your supply. It's not easy. Listen, people of God, I'm telling you now. You see, I see where I'm talking now. My wife is here. If, I, if you travel with me, you are blessed. Because I won't stay inside any kind of... You are what? You are blessed. You are happy. When I am, supplies come. Amen. It's a training. But I didn't know too. You were alone. I was just serving God. I said, when I ask for money, you just keep quiet. How can you keep quiet when we need you the most? <laughs> but I did not know he was teaching me to take my eyes off everything and put it on him. Mm. I'm telling you the I'm just talking English. I'm not talking English. Bro. I'm not talking English. I'm not talking English. I've seen money not finished for me. I told you that somebody paid for my hotel bills. $1,000 for three nights. I almost said, like, give me first. You know, you know, I don't know if you understand. Rest. <laughs> somebody else paid for my tickets, the hotels. I was, I was almost getting into worry where I would stay when, when I was in Winnipeg. And this real God said to me, why? Mama was challenging me, don't worry now. I wanted to, because I don't like embarrassments, you know? I don't like your hear me. I don't mean fair, voila. But I just realized, please, oh God. They paid the ticket, paid the hotel, and still gave me a free. So I was not preaching for games, please manage this one. So I said, what you cannot do for yourself, God will do for you. Yes, sir, amen. I'm telling you, it's amazing. I... I am now I'm even trusting God for bigger things. You know, as you keep going, you start to learn, hey, so this is how it works. Because at some point, that's why you must learn to be a giver. When you release your fears, you just know that something has gone out. But when you don't have a seed outside, the harvest is hard to expect. Mm. Yes, sir. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I took a million naira one day like that, spread it across four men of God. I took another one million, sent it directly to one. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because look, if you don't have a seed outside, it's hard to expect harvest. It's hard. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I'm not talking about one, what you, seed is not what you put inside of free, no. You need to be actively trusting God continuously for divine supplies. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh. Don't let anybody deceive. It's not easy. Uh, chief, chief, you asked how. Eh? That's what I'm trying to answer you now. Because, eh? When do you stop what? No, he said, how do you know to stop worrying? How to stop worrying? That's what I'm saying now. Eh? Okay, so let me respond. I'm saying, number one, know your worth. Right? Number two, let God be your source. This thing eh, uh, is a very strong learning. It's a program. It's a program. Trust, you know, some of us do programming language. It's a real programming language. Let God be your source, not your office. Your office might be a means. Yes, sir. But let God be your source. Yes, sir. 
That office can sack you yes, without sir. notice. Yes, sir. Whoa, 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 they won't give you a letter. Shevi, they will even sack some people, give you a letter, then you should be sacked. Yes, they will, you, no trace you ever worked there. Huh. I know what I'm saying. I, thankfully, I worked. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. The office itself is trusting God for supplies. Yes. yes <laughs> so, yes. So, what I can tell you, number one, know your worth. That is very important. Know who you are in Christ. Number two, let God be your source. Number three, have a listening ear to the Spirit of God. Mm. Have a listening ear to the Spirit of God. Let me tell you something. There is no day you pray that your prayers were not answered. Yes, sir. I say this with confidence. Never as a Christian prayed and heaven remained the same. It has never happened. See, I say it one more time for triple emphasis if necessary. Never as a man prayed on this earth and heaven did not release answers. Heaven is literally waiting for the prayer. But how that thing will land on this earth is where the issue is. If, for example, the money you are trusting God for, let's assume, or the visa you are trusting God for, or the whatever you are trusting God for, it is a man that God will use. Yes, it is a man. That man has a choice in his will to either obey God or not obey God. Yes, sir. There's nothing you can do. Yes. That's why I say in the word of men, oh God, yes, men are yes, gods. Yes, sir. What I mean by that is that men have a choice to truncate God's plan. But when men pray, the praying man wrestles with the will of that man so that that man can do the will of God. If you have my $12,000 with you and you don't want to release it and you want to give it to your babe, God is telling you, give it. I'm not giving Bishop Joab. I'm not giving Bishop. God has answered my prayer on this earth. It is the vessel that he will use now that he's trapping it. God is telling a brother, go and meet that sister. That's your wife. Fear a woman that won't come because he doesn't have money. And God is saying, go and meet him. That's your wife. When you meet her, you will prosper. That guy is waiting till money comes. Mm. So he's 45 now. And sister is 38. What is, what is God's fault? Never has a Christian prayed that God did not release an answer. Why do we keep praying? So that that man that is to now eventually deliver the will of God, God will wrestle with his heart so that his head will be correct to do the will of God. If he fails to do the will of God, God has to reroute that through somebody else who will do the will of God. Please, do you guys get what I'm trying to say? Yes, That's why we keep praying. That's why we keep praying. Because attorney prayer of deliverance. Attorney prayer we want trouble. Lead us not into temptation. Attorney prayer supplies. Please, do you guys get what I'm trying yes, to say? So the way we stop worrying is by trusting God. That's just what the answer is. Trusting God to be your source and supply. To, to lose your fears. That's what the, To lose the fear of will he answer, will he not answer. Let me tell you something. One of the best scriptures that happened to me personally was Romans 8.32. That's one of the best scriptures. That if he did not hold it back his son, but release his son from me, then he will not withhold anything from me. That's one of my best scriptures. Though. Look how this is. Because he's talking about things. He that spared not his own son, he which withhold us, did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. Will he not also with him freely and graciously give us all other things, things. Uh, that scripture helped me because I was like, eh? Is it true that he did not hold his son? That's why God can't be blamed for not supplying. Hmm. I give him my son. I will give him every power. That's why I tell you, it's not in God's hands again. Hmm. It's not in God's hands. Sometimes the money is in the hand of somebody. We just need to tell him boldly a word of knowledge. This is this, this is this in your life. God wants to solve it. And the person kneels down and says, please. This is all I have. $12,000 I was looking for. You go with the money, he goes with his miracle. Nobody's... I, 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 do you understand what Brandy hmm. But you don't have boldness to speak word of knowledge. You are saying, what if I'm wrong? It's because you still have reputation. Uh, yeah. I'm just trying to show us what I'm trying. Do you get what I'm saying? So others, it might be a concept that came to your mind, an email that God said you should send. I can tell you, the supply is not trapped in heaven anymore. It's in the hand of a man on this earth. As I'm teaching you this thing on systems, when I go to UK, I'm teaching on systems. You guys, please, if you can tune in, tune in. It will be a blessing. 
because I don't want to preach it too many times. Get it, but be there. It's going to be explosive. Systems. The systems of this world is real. If I lock up, I'm not doing God's work again. Nothing will happen, no. Nothing will happen. You just, you just be seeing people having problems, but God will judge me for entrusting such knowledge to my, knowledge, to my care, and I refuse to share it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you have to learn to trust God. Just really relax. The worst has happened. Relax. Don't think your prayer being answered is the finality of your destiny. No. That prayer you are waiting for is not the end of prayers for you. There will be more prayers to pray. So just enjoy God. Hallelujah. So worry is unbelief in a package. And unbelief in itself is a sin. Alright? So you don't want to do that. Quick, let me wrap it up what, for what I want to say. Is that okay, please? Yes, sir. I hope I've answered everybody's question. Yes, sir. Amen. <laughs> so, in a very brief charge, let me just quickly share what I want to share with you. And it's similar to what I said I was going to talk about. Listen, everybody, please look up at this point. I'll be going by the grace of God for four weeks. And by the way, please, if you don't mind, can we appreciate Mama for the teaching grace that she brought to us? I just want to urge us that if you care to know what's on my heart, I believe very strongly that God counts on me to make prudent use of those he has sent to this ministry to move us to the next level. Are you listening to what I'm saying? We are and there's no need to pretend about it despite our differences despite our challenges we have all the chance to prove to the world and to confirm to god that he could trust us with what he has given us we don't have everything but what we have if we use it well we can shake this world yes, what am i talking about i'm talking about the resourcefulness of who we are in our collective and i'm interested in three things i want to quickly point to tonight is number one the power of unity the power of unity the power of unity the number two is the power of community there are two different things the power of unity the power of community and the power of commonwealth please are we listening it is my opinion that we have not yet reached a collective strength level where everyone is geared with the same spirit of greatness that will make us show the quality of what God has deposited in our lives. We may be getting compliments here and there, but we have not yet come on a uni you know, united front to achieve what I think will make this ministry go to the next level. I want to let you know that's what I'm going to do in UK. I'm trying to go and bring unity into the church in UK. If you have friends there, it's good to let them know in Bromley and I'll be there for four weeks precisely from the 28th of April till the 24th of May I think that should be four Sundays if I'm not mistaken yeah so I'm saying this because I need us to be one together what I notice is that some of us are not stable you are allowing your personal problems affect the corporate unity and somehow we'll keep going around the spot until we all come together in unity of faith. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, Some of us, your heart, you love the ministry, you love the man of God, but your heart is not one in the operations. I want to ask you to please improve. See, the problem with church work is that if all of us were trained at the same level as maybe a corporate training, we all finished as graduates of a certain school or something, it will be nice. But we are coming together at different levels. One person graduates, one person not graduates. One person is still thinking about his certificate. Another person is still thinking about his fingernails. Another person is thinking about this one. So there, there has to be the unity of the spirit. Everybody say unity of the spirit. Unity of the spirit. Say one more time. Say unity of, the spirit. unity of the spirit. You see, the Bible says, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I want us to be one. I don't want us to discriminate on ourselves. Are you listening? Yes, sir. I know not everybody is right. I can tell you not everybody was right in this room. Yes, from when I knew when the day all of you came in. For you to look at somebody and say somebody is not good is a sign that you are not good yet. Yes, sir. I don't think of the people like that. And if I don't as the leader, you have no right to. 
We must believe in ourselves. Yes, we are serving God. I know you have a um, degree here. I know you don't have degree here. It doesn't matter. You that don't have degree, rev up your game. You that you have degree, rev down your game. Let's meet at a united front. Yes, yes, the discrimination is still very strong. There are walls dividing us from being able to work and function as an effective church. And I want to urge us tonight, can we get past it? Yes, sir. Can we believe in ourselves and do that which every other person... I won't be afraid if you would believe. And I'm speaking clearly here about unity in terms of your spirit and the duties assigned to you. You know, some of us, our personal prejudice or personal opinion, perceptions, is affecting the ministry. When we tell you to do something, you do it the way you think it should be done. That's not what works. There's a way things should be done. And... It, you may be waiting for us to teach you everything. The truth is that we don't have that privilege of being able to teach everything. The great, the great thing about any organization is that it keeps praying it had the right talents. You know how do you know the right talents? The right talents does the things you've not taught them. And they do it well. Because they get the vision. They get the spirit of what we're trying to achieve. It's not so difficult. The unity. Everybody say unity. unity. You see, unity did not stand alone. The Bible says that unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. The bond of peace means that no matter what you do, I refuse to be offended. Yes, sir. Nothing cripples a great ministry like offense. If I'm not offended, you have no reason to be, sir. I notice too much discrimination, too much posing. What are you that you have not received? Even that scripture, 1 Corinthians 4, 7. What have you that you have not received? Why are you behaving like as if you are the best of us? Or you are the one that gathered us together? You are not. Even me, pastor, I don't do that. Look at what it says. For who makes you to differ from another person? And what have you that you did not receive? If you received it, why do you glory as if you did not receive it? Why are you behaving like as if you have reached your final bus stop? Because you are seemingly better than somebody or two. I want that to stop in this church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No one is better than another person in this ministry. And I'm not laboring in vain, please. If I brought you in and received you as a father, I expect you to do likewise to others. And then don't drop the ball on us. It's not a very deep thing I'm asking us to do. It's not anything... But drop your walls and let everybody be able to feel received and loved as a church. Look how it says in Amplified. For who separates you from others as a faction leader? Who are you to cause to be feeling like somebody is smaller than you? That's pride that it will take you to hell. Yes, sir. Who makes you superior and sets you apart from another? Giving you the pre preeminence. What have you that was not given to you? Mm. If then you received it from someone, why do you boast as if you have not received it? But I've gave it by your own efforts. Mm. What are you doing? Who are we? Church is waiting for you. You will not show up. Because your name is what? Why not just take everything in the right spirit of what God has blessed you with? Are, are we listening to what I'm yes, saying? Sir. This is so important to my heart that it's one of the reasons why I have to say, no, I'm not going to go to that place today. Let's serve the Lord with a right heart. Let's be proud of our church. With a, with a, somebody offends you, don't take it too far. I didn't like what you did. I wish you could have done better. Please, you guys get what I'm talking about yes, here. Sir. And to be clearer, I'm speaking about the unity to do the work of ministry. Mm. I'm not talking about community. I'm coming to community. Community means how we live. Community. Commune. How we commune in, in unity. In that unity, how do we commune? How do we love genuinely? Mm. Unity of the Spirit. Ephesians 3, 4. Give it to me. It says the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Look, you may not have joined any church before. I don't know. But this ministry means well for this nation. Yes, sir. Yes. We do, and we're not going to stay small. But what we will do depends on how we respond. Stop thinking only in the selfish terms of your own language. You need to think beyond yourself. Understand that we're here for something, and if you're not with us, leave us. We will do well without you eventually. See what it says. Endeavoring to keep the unit of the... Okay, it's 4-3. Thank you. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond is a bond. You know what bond is? Like a swear, an oath yes, sir. that there will be peace with us. Why should I be suspecting you? 
Why should I be careful? Look, stop all those unchristianly things, people. I might not have addressed this for so long. It's because I was waiting for the right time. That if I hear that you have a divide or something against another person, or you permit some lucre or deception or something mischievous, I'm going to take it as you are a rebel in this house. And my job is to extenuate, extenuate you. It's not right. I want us to have unity. Everybody say unity. unity. You see, yes, I know they say you should have love. And I'm coming to that. That's where community speaks of. But first of all, unity because of the work. Yes, unity because of our father. No. We have a common father. And I need focus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Unity. The work. I'm talking about the work as it relates to the work. The, that's the church work now. I'm not talking about going to visit ourselves. How are we? That's different. That's community. Please, do you understand the difference? Yes, yes, Unity is how we do service. How somebody who is in charge of communion does communion. Who is in charge of media does media. Who is in charge? That's what I mean by unity. I'm not talking about unity. I can't love. I can't like. Karawa. That's community. I'm saying unity of the work with the bond of peace. And I'm simply saying, can I trust you? Do you expect me to keep trusting you when the last thing I assigned to you, you failed us on it? Simple tasks. How well do you do the job? Look, I have a duty to answer. And maybe you think you are serving me. You are not serving me. If I tell you thank you, it's just that I'm caught your soul. God is going to reward you. Let me just tell it, all of you here. I don't have your reward package. Mm. If I travel and I bring socks for you, it's because I just can't afford it. If I can't afford it, there's nothing wrong with it. Mm. Yes, sir. I don't owe anybody here. Yes, sir. That is the truth. Yes, sir. And I'm, I refuse. It's not, it's not you that made me call. The, none of you have called me. Nobody. So have the right attitude. Can I get that from us, please? Yes, sir. How do you walk when there's no work? What do you think of? Do you just bother about your own or about the general success? Hmm. I've done my own. It's not me. That statement is, is mischievous. It's unfair. Okay, you know that there's workers meeting and there's service tomorrow. Why didn't you come for workers meeting? If you are one with us, you'll be here. Yes, sir. You'll be here. If you understand the consequence of your absence, you will know that there's a great price to pay yes, sir. in your presence. It has to stop. You're not bigger than all of us. Yes, no one is bigger than the sum of all of us. None. No one. And I don't think I laid the example that makes you or permits you to behave otherwise. Yes, otherwise, I don't have the authority to say what I'm saying. No matter how high I am, some of you don't even know my real worth. Yes, I say that to you. Because I don't want to carry it here. I want to make sure you are comfortable. I want you to grow. I want you to change your attitude. I don't want to hear complaints or discrimination again in this church. Yes, sir. Community. That simply speaks about love. Philippians 4. Or give me Philippians 2. Philippians 2, 1 to 4. It's speaking about love. I want to see love. And this speaks about how we relate to ourselves. Now, there's a danger in this. That is, when we hear things or discuss the word of God, it's possible that somebody forgets quickly the word. The devil always comes to pick the word. In our jesting and community building, we must not forget that we are trying to build to God a great ministry. Yes, sir. And the devil uses that lightheadedness. Anshir, anshir fair. We are playing, we are playing. To steal the word from our hearts. As we are talking now, it's good. After we finish everything, the devil comes to steal the gravity of the discussion. Are we looking for serious minded people? No, you know, I don't think anybody plays like me in this church. I don't think so. You can't even play rich me. Because in my head, as I'm saying this, I'm still playing. <laughs> but do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Community means. A genuine heart. Listen, if you continue to conceal pain, offense, bitterness, you will soon see the results. Mm. People will leave you behind and you will ask, God, shame will not let you stay. So let us build a healthy community. Yes, sir. I don't know how to explain it, but God always raises the humble. Community. 
love, affection. What you have, you bring to the table. You don't hold something and say, I don't want to say it. I don't want people to be hearing. We are still too young for that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of us have friends you can't bring to church. It's because you are not bringing your best to the table. You like how we are. You still feel relevant that we are like this. Failing to realize that your relevance will be more when other people see you as more. Mm. Community. That communal fellowship. That community. That community. That, you know, unity is the work. Community is the love. Checking on people. Not talking carelessly. Not whispering about another person. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, and then number four is the commonwealth. I mean, number three, I mean, commonwealth. Let me quickly speak to that and I'll take number four quickly, quickly, sharp, sharp. Number one about that commonwealth is that you have to realize that there's nothing you have that God did not give you. And if God gave you something, it is for the work of the ministry. I su support and celebrate personal ideas and initiative, but not greater than the ministry. Yes, sir. Some of us, you have great initiatives. Me, who encourage you to have a great initiative? I'm almost regretting now for encouraging you. Because now your value and response to the ministry is no longer there. You can't be living like that. Look, I'm saying this. I will not die. Or I will live long. But everything I could have said, even if I died now, I'm saying to you. Your commonwealth. We will do more if our wealth is brought together. Yes, sir. Yes. Let's move this church from this level, sir. Yes, sir. Let's move. There's more. Yes, sir. There's so much more to conquer. Nobody listens to us and undermines the intelligence yes. we provide. For we do not speak things of divide, common, cunningly devised fables. We speak by the Spirit of God. But all of that can be undermined when we ourselves undermine ourselves. Mm. Your wealth. Please don't tell me that I have it in mind. Do what you can do from now. By now we've talked about partnerships. Let me tell you something. Your partnership is not what has taken. Thank God you have not given it. Abi? Yes, sir. Hope you know that I don't sign the accounts of this church as at today. Hope you, by now you should have heard it. The reason I'm saying so, as we grow more, I will not be saying it again so that it won't look like I'm posing. But the truth is, just to clear your doubts, that the money doesn't come to my pocket too. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Yes, and that is in an attempt to provide probity, 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 probity and accountability. Just to assure you that your money is not what we are using to buy jeans or, or jeep. Do you understand? Yes. Why am I saying this to you? If your wealth is not involved here, your heart will not be involved. Mm. Don't deceive yourself. You are just watching us fail. Mm. You are waiting for our failure. And I can tell you we will never fail. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm only asking you, give your best. I don't know what you earn. I don't know where God blessed you, but never hold a tight back. What is it used for? It's used for the development of God's house. We brought the accountant here. He was telling us that we have over 64 million in deficit. Am I correct? Yes, True false. Am I correct, ma? Yes. Over 64 million in deficit that we have settled, though, but we don't know who settled it. You can find out from God. Because even me, I'm not aware I've ever had 64 million. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know the, it's the truth. I, I've never consciously seen 64 million that is my own. But God never owes us here. I'm just telling you guys, let us grow a great ministry. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? The last part, please sit down. The last thing I'll say quicker and then we close is commitment. Everybody say commitment. commitment. And consistency. Say consistency. consistency. I want to say this because these two words, are, they must go together. If you are committed for only a season, you will see your testimony for only a season. Commitment needs consistent... I, I was telling uh, admin today, I said... Don't just tell me about good ideas. Think in terms of sustainability. I don't start what I can't sustain, sir. <laughs> what I might sit down there. Why am I bringing that to our attention? Quick, let's wrap it up. Commitment. That decision. You know, look at me. Look at me, everybody. You know, there's a way you come to terms with yourself. <sighs> I have decided. I am a member of virtues. And these virtues... We're going to build it together. Yes, Some of us are still oscillating. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
I'm not sure. My father said I should not do. I don't know what I'm doing there. You will never, we will just be romancing rubbish with you. And I'm tired of doing that. You need to get to a point where you decide as an adult what you want to do. Follies, I'm flicking around you, not able to commit with direction. You know how you feel? Nonsense. What's this one up to? At some point, you just ask him, where are we going to with this? It's not because you are desperate. It's because somebody is play, playing pancake with your life. Ah. We're not sure whether you are here. We're not sure whether you... We can't say firmly that you are here. I can't boast of you. Firmly, this guy is a member of me me If this is how you show membership, then I shouldn't even give you any responsibility or any, any trust in either back in turn. Because your responsibility, the way you are responding, shows a lot of lack of faith. You don't believe in what we are doing. You just think we are playing idea here. If you really are a stakeholder, you will give your blood to make sure we succeed. Yes, sir. Nothing with this. Nothing. And yet, so I'm giving you all. You, I promise you by the mercies of God, go and match my commitments to you with any pastor anywhere else. I boast in God on that. What am I asking you to do? Be committed. Carry virtues on your head. Tolani is making posts. You have not made your own. It's not even crossing your mind. 115 posts in 365 days. You have not shared one. I didn't ask her to do it. I don't know why she's doing it. But you can see consistency every day. I look forward to it every day. Just she picked one area commitment by now you will stop in time to that that time you sit down doing whatever thing you're doing why can't you add value to the church so was just stay just and you want to be complimented look that i laugh with you is because i'm a christian i expect way much more from you nonsense and you're just laughing just gallivanting i assure you if you put that thing on your status it will encourage somebody to know that these virtues is more serious than we thought. Yes, sir. No support from you. That's not money. Yes, sir. That's not money. Don't tell me that. That's not money. Before you think it's only, uh, only about money we're talking about. It's like you lack commitment and you're not consistent even in the little you're doing. I can't pay her for that. But you are sitting there and it's 365 days. We're going to enter May soon. What have you done? consistently faithfully with a sense of direction that i'm in this ministry for for good that this ministry we own it what do you do that you are just playing with my life and it's not just that you start you start and stay three she's on 115 days now thankfully she marks it 115 over 365 what a blessing imagine if all of us were sharing videos I'm not saying the old church. I'm saying just us in this room. Everybody had a video. Everybody had a vision on his lips. Everybody saying something. Everybody talking about it. Everybody projecting life. Imagine where we will be. We might not be where we are going to, but we will not be where we are. Mm. What support am I getting from you? Okay, bring me money. Bring me people. None. I believe that this discussion will produce righteousness. Yes, Amen. Amen. And I'm challenging us with commitments. If you decide this is my church, people will know. Yes. People will, nobody will beg you. You will know where you ought to be. It's not a conversation. Come to my church. It's not a discussion. It's, you are the one that will be moving dickies from other church. You'll be shouting virtues like as if there's no other church. Yes, we can pick the hand few that are motivated by it. Some of you don't want to call names. This is not tonight. Some of you, I just look at your status and I see what you post. I see the things. I see that there's no passion in it. Look, if you post me, it's not me you post. It's the church of God you post. I only have, I'm just the face of it. And it's better I didn't know you or have you around than to be deceived I have you and you're not helping me. What have I asked for? I've not said you should bring one million naira. Have I done that? Have I prophesied on you and said, ah, your life uh, nonsense? No, we're not. It's those type of people you people like, Abby. Eh? They'll be crossing leg like that. Okay. I'm not planning to waste my life. Oh, I, I, mean, I have children to, to model for. But you like deception, do you? If you understand what God is doing here by now, your passion and you would have found somewhere to hold. 
that this one, oh, in this church, pastor, I promise you, you will never need to ask for it again. We're still looking for laptop to project service. We're still looking for this one to get this one done. You know? And I might not have called your issue, but I want to let you know you can do better where you are. Yes, sir. You can. I watch your status. You say, I have time to do it. I can write it for you. I have enough time. I'm just challenging us tonight because my journey again for now, look at some of us, you won't come for prayers. I know behind those pads, those phones, where you join, you are know, sleeping. And you say, Pastor, I was in prayers. It's not about me. It's not about me. It's not about me. It's not about me. You, you know you can deceive everybody. You can't deceive. Uh, I want to stop here. And I, I believe that my heart is clear. I say this because I believe that from time to time, a real father should challenge his children. Yes, sir. And without having to talk too much, you should know what to do. Yes. Now let me just close with this. The work of God becomes very tiring when you do it with the arm of flesh. It's difficult to cope with life's challenges without the Holy Spirit. It's difficult. it's difficult. Even to stay motivated is difficult with by yourself. That's why I just said, don't go anywhere until you are filled with the Holy Spirit. So without the Holy Spirit, this work would be frustrating for some of us. That's why we talk about being filled. You were filled before, but you have dispensed energy. You need to refill. To be filled again. To the days when your passion was high. To the days when you were high by the Holy Ghost. Every time, from time to time, we'll all have needs, bills to pay. I know the meaning, sir. I know bills. Bills know me. I don't know if you know what I mean by that. Bill. <laughs> Bio, do you believe me? Bills, they know me. As in, bill by bill. God, I'm bill. They know me by name. That one we. They have seen shaggy from bills. Legit and illegit bills. I paid millions. As I can't tell you a story. Don't let me over please sit down there. What am I saying? The Holy Ghost is our comforter to serve God correctly. Without the Holy Spirit, you will be motivated, but it will soon go down. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. New Year resolution is based on sincere convictions. But conviction alone without empowerment of the Holy Ghost can't help you sustain. Yes, sir. I will do it. I will do it from now. Ah, Bishop, you see me. Soon your motivation will wane low. If the Holy Ghost doesn't back you up, you will soon be tired. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. What do I mean by that? And I'm not talking about Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Mm, I'm talking about the fresh power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 3.19. It says, and when the times of refreshing shall come at the presence of the Holy Spirit, or the presence of God. Acts 3.19. He talks about it. So what am I saying? I'm saying here that you need to be sure you are connected to the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to what I'm yes, saying? Yes, sir. Otherwise, the arm of flesh will be tired. Oh, my re. You won't be able to sustain it. You won't be able to give life to others. It is the Holy Spirit that helps us be strong. Yes, it's not just good wish thinking. No. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Look how it says. It says, repent ye therefore, that is change your heart and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. One of the times of refreshing, times of refreshing, somebody say refreshing. refreshing. There's such a thing called refreshing, where your spiritual life is refreshed. It don't happen outside the presence of God. Ooh. It comes with joy. There's a refreshing that comes when we're in the presence of God. There's a refresh. If you don't get refreshed, oh man, swear yes, you'll be tired. It will look like your zeal is gone. Not that it's gone. It's the Holy Ghost they are not connected with. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is our source and our power. Yes, sir. It's our backing. In the choir is our backing. In the pulpit is our backing. Yes, when pastors are is our backing. Look, the arm of flesh will always fail. It's the Holy Ghost yes, that keeps us strong, folks. The Holy Ghost. When you are tired, te so te, you pray. When we gather together, we pray. We're not going to have time for gossip. We're not going to have time for rubbish. We're going to have times of refreshing. Yes, it's by the presence of the Lord. He says, and now the Lord is that spirit. If any man be in Christ, he says he's free. He's free. For there's a spirit of liberty. 
The Holy Ghost is our secret. The Holy Ghost is our shorty. The Holy Ghost is our guarantee. The Holy Ghost. We have no other power but Him. We may mean well, but we we'll never get well yes, without sir. the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. I like that scripture. It says, when times, refreshing has times. There are times you just know that you have tried. Mm. Your, your strength is ebbing out. Distractions are plenty. Some of us go through life with confusion. When they tell you to come and lead prayers, you just come here. Say, let us begin to pray. You have not refreshed yourself. You should go to the toilet, wash your face. Say, Spirit of God, refresh me. If you are not refreshed, how do you give refreshing to people? Hmm. Some of us, we never share testimonies. It's always a problem. You know why? I you are never refreshed. Hmm. You, are never refreshed. you are never refreshed. You are never refreshed. That is the secret of any real person that will serve God. Yes, sir. Refreshing must never cease. Can we begin to pray the Holy Ghost at this point? And just pray. For adventure, somebody will be refreshed tonight. Those your wrong behavior. You will keep getting it wrong until the Holy Ghost helps you get it right. The Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Pray that you are refreshed. Pray that you are refreshed. Pray that you are refreshed. Open up your mouth and pray tonight. That the Holy Ghost will refill you and refresh you afresh by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Spirit of the Living God, refresh our hearts, O oh God. Refresh our hearts, O oh God. Open up your mouth. Shete grege susadaba. Mo sete ga shuda baba gada baba brege mo. Zeke te 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 Oh brege 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 the mo. Hallelujah. In Jesus name we pray. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you the truth. Without the Holy Ghost, we can't go far. Yes, sir. You may feel very provoked by my challenge concerning unity. Feel compelled to respond to community. Feel compelled to do commun or commonwealth. Feel compelled to do commitment and consistency. But without the help of the Holy Ghost, it will be frustrating. What do we do? We pray. Let me tell you something. The Bible says, open up your mouth wide and I shall feel it. Psalm 81 verse 10. It says, open up your mouth wide. Now, what that means is that you can open your mouth. But it is to the degree of the wideness I will feel it. Yeah. Psalm 81 verse 19. Look at it. Verse 10. I mean verse 9 and 10. Sorry. Psalm 81. Let's just quickly look at it. If you can. Let's pray the Holy Ghost while that comes up. Yes. Look how it says. It says, there shall no strange God be in thee. Somebody say, no strange God be in me. You know what that means? Things contending for God's attention in your life. There will be no strange God in thee. There will be no strange... It says... Neither shall thou worship any strange God. You, there will be nothing else in your spirit. Nothing else. See, let me tell you something, guys. Let me just tell you the truth. All said and done, this is the secret. Look at the next verse, verse 10. He said, what? I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. He said, open thy mouth wide. You know, he says, when he says, it, it talks about being filled with the Holy Spirit again. Is how wide your mouth is open that the feeling of God comes in. Mm. Listen, I know there are some people that are logical Christians. When we talk about spiritual things, they feel we have logical, mm, mm. but by logic, I'm a very pragmatic person. All right? I, I'm too trained to be pragmatic to be deceptive. What am I saying? Without the feeling of the Holy Spirit, you will be stranded in your commitments to life. Mm. Look at what it says. It says, and I will feel it. What's your job? Open your mouth wide. Yes, sir. What that means is pray wide. Don't pray silent. Mm. Pray, don't pray whisper. Mm. You will never be filled. Aya, aya. You will never be filled. Oh, so, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst, for then I shall feel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you're not it's the level of your hunger. You just say, feel oh, God. We, we know where you are. I can locate your spiritual status. Oh, so, so, so. Can somebody get filled tonight? Yes, sir. Open up your mouth wide and let's get filled tonight. Open up your mouth wide and let's get filled. It says, open your mouth wide. Masatege shadabara. O krekete da bala 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 bala. Me shadaga da da ronda da da bagere bagere bota. Udreke susa bragataya. Epelebo shadaba. 
I tell you something, there is no time man prays on earth that heaven remains the same. I say it with revelation and with instruction. There is no day a Christian prays on earth collectively that heaven does not respond. I want to let you know something, eh? This thing that we talk about, opening thy mouth. He said, open your mouth. They say, why? And it tells us that it is the degree of your hunger and thirst it shall feel. Mm. Mm. When you are getting stuck, drudgery, you know, clumsiness, mm. tiredness, mm. fatigue, mm. overwhelmed, you find out that you are be becoming dissonant to the Spirit of God. Mm. You find out that, okay, even I like say your body, they do you. That is when you open your wide and get filled. Don't whisper. You are hearing me. Don't whisper. The whisper is after you have shouted. It's 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 after you have shouted. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth! Oh, Break it, the the gososa. Masote kelebos. Mi dragadoba sosa. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord just said something to me now. He said, you have shouted in secret so that you will not Look, it is the shout you offer in secret that makes your voice quiet in public. Hmm. We are saying you should shout now. Some of you are still protecting your osophagus. This is the secret. 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 Hey I want you to learn to practice this privately. Yes, sir. Trust me, sir. That guy said, there's a river inside of me that is able to drown the world. He knows what he's saying. It's tied to our silence. Oh, le lanwe. Oh, le lanwe. You are too comported to pray. Yes. Nonsense. Then you want me to pray supernatural breakthrough? Oh, let that rough right. Oh, that can be bad rough. Oh, serious. Yeah. 
Thank you for tonight. You, Take all the glory to our Lord. Hallelujah. Can we just respond to God tonight and say, Lord, have your way. Hallelujah. Spirit of God, fill me afresh. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord, say, Lord, fill me afresh. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I give you praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory to God. Can we give the Lord a shout? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Please, let's give our offerings and close this service powerfully. I want to urge you to please not forget that last point. I took it last so that you remember. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost while we are giving our offering tonight. I want you to be conscious of the role of the Holy Spirit. In the success of the believer let him guide us let him do his work hallelujah the role of the Holy Spirit must not be subjugated or seeded out he is the light of life he is our courage he is our boldness Lord we thank you Spirit of God we bless you Jesus, we love you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. I see shackles shattered. I see mindsets broken forever. I see burdens being lifted. I see long standing oppressions in migraine lifted forever. I see somebody seeing lights. As he journeys forward from tonight. Amen. I see someone who was losing appetite to life. Receive refreshing. Amen. Receive supernatural help. 
May your steps not wumble. Amen. May that beautiful thing God has given you to keep, may it not be broken. Amen. May that lovely thing God has given to your life not be stolen. Amen. I pray that from now, refreshing will not cease from your heart. Amen. You will never be dry again. Amen. Your Christianity will not be empty. Amen. Jesus will be glorified. Amen. I bless you with the blessings of a father. Amen. You will prosper. Amen. No need to fear. No need to worry. All shall be well. Amen. Now I open your ears to hear the instructions from heaven. Amen. To locate the right providential relationships. Amen. To be at the right place at the right time. Amen. To get the right results in your life. Amen. From today, you will no longer live like a vagabond. Amen. What was you must ask to walk now. Amen. I speak that favor comes upon you. Amen. Financial favor. Amen. Marital favor. Amen. Or career favor. Amen. Favor round about. Amen. Now when you stand and you speak, your voice will carry weight. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I call you blessed. Amen. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Let's give our giving our offerings. Anybody tithing tonight? Anybody casting his tithe or her tithe? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for those giving their tithe tonight, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you will bless their generosity. Amen. Lord, let this act of faith and generosity provoke righteousness into their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let them have more testimonies of this God kind, oh God. Amen. Let them know the power of divine supplies. Amen. Let your name be glorified. Amen. Thank you, eternal Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please, if you have talk to god if you're giving with your card or your phone or something you can use your pos card or whatever thing let's pray father thank you for the opportunity to give once again let your name be gloriously glorified thank you because you are moving us to the next level holy spirit let the testimony of this com com this commitment oh god never lose its consistency take all the glory to our father in jesus name i commend your children to you oh god let none here be lost. Amen. Let me come back and meet them doing better. Amen. Let no one rape them. Amen. Let no one plunder them. Amen. Let Jesus protect them. Amen. Thank you, Tana. It's an improvement in our giving in offerings. And I want to say thank you. It's a response to, um, maybe it's a response to what I discussed last time. I want to be kind enough to acknowledge it and say, God bless you. Amen. God bless. I've noticed it has improved. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And please don't let it stop. You know, it will be better to better. Let God keep blessing you. I'm praying for you genuinely. And I pray that you will see the result of my prayers. Amen. I love you all very sincerely. Amen. I'm going to miss you mightily. Please, when I check prayers, be there. All right? Time zone is the same. It's not like uh, uh, Canada, America. Canada can be very confusing. So I'm not even sure whether you're awake or you're asleep, you know? So, but then, yeah. So, but it's the same time zone we are using. So, I'll be at the prayers. Don't doubt it. I'll be there. And I would like to see you there. Do you understand? Yes, uh -huh. Ordinary, some of you now should be pastors in this ministry. It's just that who will you be pastoring when you have not brought anybody? <laughs> eh? Yes, now. Who will you be dicking in when you have not brought anybody? Eh? The people me I bring, you will now pass over them. Is that what you want? You are not bringing people. You now want me to. You now become pastor over the people me I brought again. It's not sheep that gives birth to sheep. Reproduce your kind. You know, reproduce your kind. Bring your friends. Eh? And when they come, be stable. When they see you are not stable, they too they are not stable. They came because they believe you. Listen, anybody that you see in this church is a potential for this ministry. We can grow this ministry, yes, sir. sir. Let's try to speak it. Hallelujah. Help me greet to your neighbor. Tell the person, the pastor loves us genuinely. Say, he's praying, he's praying for us. Say, we have work to do now. Yeah. We have work to do now. May the Lord strengthen you and I. We will excel in this work. In Jesus' name. I love you, sister. Let's say, go in charge, grace and peace. Grace and peace in multiply on to us. Through the light of God, our Father, and of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Say to your name of grace and peace, please. Grace and peace in the Father, of you, and of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Say the point yourself finally, please. Grace and peace in the Lord, our Father, and of Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Christ, my Lord. So let's see by the grace of God later today, please. Amen. I love you all. God bless you.